Okay. Yeah, it's not what you do. It's what they do. Okay. Um, so it's not, I can't help you with that. You guys have to pin your own. Is everybody good? Does anybody need help? Not quite sure how to do that. Um, Speaker view usually instead of gallery. Like so in the right upper right-hand corner, there should be a little thing that says view with like um, three little, that would click on it. If you, there should be a check mark next to speaker. And if everybody's on mute, that makes me the speaker. And then I should be the biggest picture. Does that make sense? Linda, do you need help? Was that you? That uh, was me. Um, I mean, I've got the split screen with you, but it's more, I mean, nothing personal, but it's more focused on you than the, what you're doing. So you have to, so that I have two cameras. You have to pick the picture of my tabletop. You don't want to just be looking at me because you're not seeing what I'm doing in that picture. No, I'm not, I'm not seeing what you're doing. I, I, I don't know what I'm doing wrong. So um, do you see the little in the upper in the upper right hand corner if you take your mouse over the zoom screen, it should say view and if you click on that, it should say you should be able to see um, speaker gallery full screen and you want to click on speaker. Oh, maybe I'm because I'm talking through my laptop. Can she select pin oh. this? Cause she pinned. She should, she that's what, that's what I did. I've selected your table you down. Yeah. And I just pinned it because it just was the easiest thing to do. Okay. So, so Linda, go to my box with it's my tabletop and click okay. on those three dots, click on it. And the Got fourth it. one says add pin. And then if you add my tabletop as your pin, that becomes the biggest screen. Okay. I got that. Okay, so now do you see my hand? Is it the biggest I do. one? I do. Okay, good. Okay, so you're there. Okay. Okay. I'm glad we could fix that for you. Does anybody need anything else? I'm, yeah, I'm not there. I'm on an I'm on an iPad though, so I'm not oh, sure. That's what, that's what I'm on. I'm on the iPad. Yeah. I don't think the iPad should but my three my three dots just they don't give me pin as an option. They just take me into the chat box. Oh. Uh, the one you uh, go into someone's, it's, when you're hovering over someone's picture, it's, it's not the bottom, right? No, it, when you're hovering over someone's picture, it should say ask to mute. And then next to ask to mute is a little blue box. And inside there's three little dots. And if you click on that box to the right of the ask to mute box, it should drop down to Ask to mute, stop video, chat, add pin, replace pin, spotlight for everyone. Okay. Does that make sense? Do you see that? I don't see it, but I don't, I don't want to hold everybody. Okay. Is there another way to make my, my, okay. I've never done it on the iPad. I feel like it's always been that way. I don't know. Maybe hover the mouse over it for a second, Deb. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna keep going. But in the recording, uh, you should have this big screen. Okay, Linda and Deb, if you're not seeing my tabletop is the biggest screen right now, in the recording you will. Okay, so we're recording now and I'm gonna start painting with the wax. So I did the underpainting, right? And I have the sandpaper here um, and I'm gonna get, all right, so I'm stepping across the threshold, going into the wax band. So here I'm pulling up, up my palette, right? So I want, and I have two palettes, but they're set up Id almost identical. Um, you guys who have worked with me before, you know, you know I'm a little brush crazy. So I like a lot of different size brushes at my beck and call, right? So I like to be able to pick and choose the brush size. So I put them all in this tin with what I call mud. So it's just wax medium um, and then dirty paint. 
basically, right? So um, then the brushes are all nice and soft. You know, once you use a brush in wax, it's always gonna be a wax brush, right? So my mud color right now is um, like is like a greenish color. So I, I could definitely use that, but I'm not, go you know, I could definitely use that like greenish color. I think it would be fine. Um, it's so translucent and light. I could always color over it, but I'm just gonna go ahead and clean these brushes. I'm gonna use a two inch hockey brush. I'm gonna use a four inch hockey brush. Or actually, sorry, this is a three inch. I don't know if I even have a four. Do I have a four inch? I think this is a four inch. Yeah, this is a four inch. So I'm gonna use the four inch. And again, I can kind of see, you can see the color that I'm wiping out of the brush and this is how I'm cleaning it, right? These paper towels too, you guys, that I'm putting wax on, I can reuse them in the studio. Like I don't have to throw them out. Like I can use a wax cloth to clean my palette or to clean my table, right? So it's kind of fun. Now this brush looks still still looks green, but I'm pretty sure that the green just stained the bristles and that it's not going to paint green. But I could always test it, right? I keep I keep a lot of scraps of paper around, like right. So you can always give your brush a test onto something bright white to see if it's clean or if you really like that color, right? And remember too, like you have some color in your photo already, you have some gray, maybe you burned it a little bit, you know, you have some colors in there. So you always wanna be sure that you're putting a color on there, you know, that you like. Um, and remember, you can always paint over the wax to make it another color. Okay, so, I can use this rag to kind of clean my hot plate. So I have the two inch and the four inch hockey brushes. They're my favorite brushes because they're nice and even, right? You can see that their brush, their bristles are long and they're even at the ends, right? So I now have a tendency to buy cheaper brushes from the hardware store like this one, which is a wood staining brush, but it's organic bristles. But then what I do is I give it a haircut. So I actually just take my scissors and I give it a haircut, which makes my bristles even, right, at the end. Okay, here we go. And so that's like that. And then I have another little one inch brush. Now the thing about the bristle brushes is they're gonna give you a lot more texture, right, when you brush. And you can see that the bristles are thicker and it's just gonna give you more texture. And there's nothing wrong with texture it's just gonna make the wax look different. And it's gonna go back to that analogy that I used earlier today about um, being busier, right? So when something is smooth, that translates to me as being calm, calm or serene. And when something's textured, that visually translates to me as being um, chaotic or noisy, okay? So maybe you wanna use the analogy of quiet versus um, noisy. So these bristly brushes are gonna be noisier. Oh my God, you could think about it in terms of photography too, right? Because you remember like with the ISO, if your ISO gets higher, you get more like pixel noise. And it, we used to use, um, when we were using film, I'm looking for a paint scraper. When we were using film, you know, if we use, I don't know, when we used a high ISO film, it was noisy, right? So that meant that there was like texture in the molecules of the film and it was making the picture look maybe blurry or fuzzy. Okay. So one of the things I like to talk about too with the wax is that you're basically um, fogging it over. Okay. So you're, you're literally starting to play around with focus and you're fogging it up. So I already de de defined this a couple times. But um, I could do it again like this, and I can just draw a circle. This is my, this is the center of my photo, right? Right, this. So this is my focal point. This is my center. So when I start to think about painting it with wax, I'm going to think like clear here, 
no texture. And then I can start to think about just blur on blur around it. So those, that's like a decision that I know works for me. I've done that consistently before. If I happen to put too much wax on there, I know that I can remove it, right? So when we talk about lessening wax, we can talk about scraping it back or heating it up. Okay, so also I'm gonna choose a nice, big, fat, smooth brush and I'm gonna just use wax medium right now. I'm not using any encaustic paint right, right now. I'm just gonna use the wax medium and I'm gonna do an all over coat over this photo. And remember, this is paper, okay? So here I am, right? And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna focus on that arch. So you know I love that arch. I've been talking about that arch all day. So I went ahead and I made a nice smooth stroke in that arch. So it might not seem like that big of a deal. However, brush strokes to me are sort of directional and um, should go in a way that you're like interested in something. Also smooth is gonna be more glass-like and it's gonna give you more visibility to your photo. So I went ahead and like kind of made that rainbow arch right here over that space. And then I'm gonna switch brushes and I'm gonna go to my next um, thicker hockey brush, right? So I'm gonna stay with the smooth brush for another second and I'm gonna paint with this guy. I'm gonna put this one just on the palette so it stays warm, still using the wax medium. And I'm gonna just start to go for these other flowers, right? So I can go in circles. I can kind of go in curves, right? I can go follow the flow of the flower, right? So I'm just kind of like covering them. Um, and those are my, so those are my co-stars. So notice I did my star, my co-stars, and now I'm going to switch brushes again, and I'm going to go to these bristly ones, and I'm just going to be playful, and I'm going to really kind of like texture, hashtag the outside, okay? So I have three sort of variable textures on here for my underpainting with the wax, or my first coat of wax, right? And I like the long, I like the long strokes with this one. This is nice and I can hashtag it. And if I go further with the wax, like if I keep waxing, I'm gonna create more texture, right? If I keep adding and hashtagging, I'm gonna get more texture, right? So, and if I lift up and go back down, I'm really gonna get some nice burlapy texture, which means I'm gonna get like spaces in between the lines. Um, notice I just flipped the print too. A lot of times I feel like I, I just want it to be accessible to me. So I just move the print. Okay, so that was kind of a neat little, little strategy that I made up to start this photo. Okay, now because I'm working on paper and I only did one layer, I don't need to fuse this. So I'm gonna just take this and I'm gonna be like, woohoo. All right, I did it, it looks great. I'm gonna put it to the side. Now, the reason that I do that is a couple of reasons. One is that I like to do things in batches, just like I just did all that underpainting. I like to do what I call first coats of a bunch of pieces in a batch. So I'm in the wax medium mood and I'm just gonna keep going, right? And I'm very familiar with all of these photos now because I picked them, I've glued them, I've underpainted them. I'm just gonna check that this one's dry, right? So now I can get this first coat of wax medium. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing that I just did again with these four brushes, okay? I know my star of this photo is this flower and this flower. My co-star is here and here. So that means that I'm gonna go smooth, hockey brush, for lots of visibility and a nice clear coating on this one and this one, these four. And then I'm gonna switch to the other brush and then I'm gonna switch to the other brushes. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. Okay, here I go. <clears throat> now I can see that there's a little bit of a greenish tint that did come off this dirty brush, but I don't care. I like it. I mean, I could dump and start again with the wax medium, but I'm, not, I'm gonna be fine because I know that if I really wanted to make something bright white, I can definitely just paint over it. 
All right, so there's my one flower. There's my other flower. I just did nice and square. Here's my other flower. And then here's my other flower. So that's my four, four stars. Now I'm gonna go for, for, you know, smooth kind of some florally, right? And again, I'm going in the direction of the flower, right? So I'm not going like up and down and trying to paint this in a line. I'm sort of just going with the shape of the flower. I'm gonna switch brushes to this um, wood brush. And now, now's a good, okay, so this is an interesting, because this like whole thing has this like action to the left, I think I'm gonna start painting in that direction, right? Like this, right? So I could go in stripes like this along that line. I do think the direction of the brush strokes is like an, an action, an emphasis on the flow of the painting, right? I could get some texture up here to kind of contrast. The reason that I'm doing smooth versus textured is like the same reason that I did black versus white. So I feel like I'm creating some contrast, contrast between the way I put on the two waxes, right? So I kind of emphasize contrast with the darks and lights of the photo. Now I'm gonna emphasize contrast between the texture of the wax. Also the depth of the wax. So I'm gonna to have to try to quiet some of these areas down. So uh, I'm gonna deal with that soon, right? The other thing I can do, which is um, a, a kind of interesting too, is I could always like with the paper, I can dip the paper too, like right into the wax. Um, but like, let me just keep going with what I'm doing with the texture. So I can also do um, some drips, right? So somebody asked me about drips on Thursday. They were so cute. They said, if you drip, does that mean that you're inexperienced? And I said, absolutely not. <laughs> so I'm just adding a couple drips. And I think that the drips are so floral um, that they're always kind of fun. Okay. So here's this one, now it's wax and I'm just gonna keep going, right? Because I'm in a happy, I could see the green on that though. But it's okay, I can switch to the clear. All right. Now, um, I'm gonna switch pots. Okay. Uh, oh, sorry. Someone's trying to call me from New Jersey. Is anybody missing from the group? I don't know. Oh, Melissa, are you having, am I frozen? Are you guys okay? Melissa looks frozen. I'm okay. I think Melissa's frozen. Mar uh, Marsha, you're okay. Nancy, you're good. I am. We seem to have lost your over. Your overhead has changed a little bit. <laughs> oh, I'll put it back. You know, that's yeah. someone just tried to call me. Yeah. Oops. And someone called me. I wonder. What was that? Start video. All right, here we go. Better? Oh, that's the inside of my hand. That was really nice. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, see, I see a pot now, though. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll move you over. Oh, you see, ow, I just killed my heart. All right. You see a pot now? Do you see? Is that better? What? That was good. That's good. I just smashed my leg. <laughs> okay, I'm going to move the pot. Okay. So now we get to work on this fun one. So I'm still in my wax medium mode. And here we go. So I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, Deb, are you still here? Yep. Okay, so, we, good. Uh, so we're only missing uh, Melissa. Let me see if she's trying to sign back in. Hold on one second, you guys. It's always like crazy too in people's wife. 
<laughs> Melissa, she's still on here. Let's see. Okay. Oh, maybe she's back. Um, she's, oh yeah, she's gone. All right, we'll see if she pops back up. Okay, so I already know, like I, I talk about like strategy, like I already know that I want to draw, and I've been saying this with even the, uh, with the paper pieces, like because this is my, like my focal point, right? I really want to do everything else to fade away. So one of the things about wax is that like the thicker it is, right? The blurrier it is. So like, I really want like all of this to go very, very blurry. Oh, look, she's back. Oh, good. Okay. So I'm gonna just start laying it on pretty, pretty thick here. And I think I'm gonna go, I think I'm gonna try to go like, smooth smooth and this whole like sweet like this is like a sweet hole and like textured around so that might be a good idea uh, melissa are you back i think so oh good okay well we spent most of the time you were gone worrying about you i'm sorry you. you didn't miss anything we just spent most of the time worrying where you were all right you guys so does anybody have a favorite piece yes does anybody have a favorite piece is this your favorite or was the first one or this one or the triptych? I don't like that other one. Does yeah, that one like that this one. one? Yeah. Better than this one? They're very similar. They are, but the, it, the way you have your underpainting is different. The way I have my underpainting is very different. Very yes. good observation. All right, let's see if I can make it back. Let's see if I can pull it back. Okay. So one of the things too, and I don't want to rule this out. Has everybody done a pour process with me? Yes. Okay. So there's always, always, always the option to pour a little bit. So this I think is maybe a good opportunity to do that. And does anybody know why I would do that? Why would I choose to pour? Smoothness. Right. Smoothness, glass-like. I also think it goes back to that uh, like contrast comparative um, idea that smooth versus textured is a very different feeling, right? So it's like calm versus chaos. So if I want something to be very sweet and calm, I think a pour could be a good idea. So let's see if I can kind of like pour it. I'm not gonna pour the whole panel, but let's see if I can kind of pour it in that arch, right? And then I can actually like pour and brush, which is kind of an interesting idea. Um, I can't really control where the wax is gonna go. And I mean, I could if I like drew like a form, right? But now as it's cooling, I could kind of move it. And I like this like kind of like this hole it gave me right here. Um, so I'm, and now I'm gonna take this uh, wicker brush. I'm gonna kind of, it's neat too. Like you can start to think about these two lines kind of like converging right and like blending up into it now the thing about the pour is that you're putting a lot on fairly um quickly so it's going to be thick right so that's okay we can kind of like build up around it and then i know when it cools down i can level it out and shave it right all right so i'm just going to kind of like cover the rest Okay, so I always do these wax medium coats before I start painting with any colors or any encaustic. And the reason that I do that is so that I don't stain my white. Okay, so it's kind of like staining, staining the, staining the white t-shirt. You know how like, especially guys, they're always like when they wear a white t-shirt, they, they're sure to like spill mustard on it, right? Or, or get like tomatoes and you're like, I just got you that nice new white t-shirt, right? So the same thing with the encaustics, like you want to kind of maintain and protect your whites because they're your highlights and they're gonna help you um, navigate this encaustic painting. So I never um, put any colors, colored encaustic or oils on the base coat. Okay, so here we go. 
So now this looks like a total mess, but I think it's going to be like the, you know, the, what do they call it? The diamond in the rough, right? When it cools down, it gets more translucent um, and we scrape it back a little bit. This is going to be a real beauty. And we're also going to be able to um, add, add some encaustic color and see what we want to do next. All right, so this is our real experimentation piece. And I just wanted to like kind of add that um, possibility of pouring and brushing on the same panel. Okay, so um, Tiffany has to, to continue that kind of idea too. I'm gonna start working with the triptych, and then I'll do the, and then I'll do. Actually, this is working out perfectly. All right. So just to get a little bit more involvement from you guys here, I, I think if you're gonna, you could paint these, I'm gonna put this back together like this to paint it. And I'm gonna go back to that brushing. I'm gonna keep it together when I paint it, right? Uh, just, cause I think it'll look, look nicer. Okay. So I'm gonna go back to the big brush Right, wax medium, big brush. And I'm gonna go, we know my star is here, right? My star, and again, it's kind of like a circle. It's going a little bit off. Like I could do like an oval. Let me see. I could do a stripe. I could do like a stripe. That's gonna give me a nice, right? Clear look into the center. I like how these wrinkles are reacting to the wax. That's nice. I'm going to switch brushes to my two inch brush and I can kind of piece the rest together. Now there is a lot of um, what, what I would call a lot more empty space in this picture, which I actually really like. So my brush strokes could be maybe a little bit calm, you know, like I could do like calm to go with calm. Right. Also notice I'm getting a nice, flow to my wax. It's plenty warm enough, right? I'm not getting any brush resistance, right? I'm, I'm able to like travel pretty far. And I'm kind of, I'm just doing what really whatever comes to me that comes to me. I don't really ever stress about this brush in the wax on thing. This is actually like for me, this is like the funnest part. I, I just, I'm always happy with how it turns out. I don't get too critical because I know that I have a lot of power over this wax, that it's very vulnerable to me, that I can really manipulate it, right? With my tools, with the heat, right? So I'm, I'm just, I'm not taking this too uh, intensely, right? I'm just having fun. And you could think about, you know, building up a little bit more where you wanted a little bit more fuzzy, and here's my little flower down here. So I could do like a nice stripe on that, right? So it's clear. And the idea of the stripe too is that you're just not doing as much like brush work on it. And it's just gonna be softer because you went like straight over it and it's gonna be clear. Okay, so I think that looks kind of cool. I can build this up on the edges of the panel. So go from the outside in if I want, right? So thicker on the edges. It's kind of fun. Make sure it's all covered. If you see any paper, if you see any paper sticking out, you can go back through and cover it up. Um, and I think that looks pretty good. Okay. All right. And I think we have one more paint with wax medium, and then we can just start talking about how to pick colors. And then tomorrow we'll come in with encaustic paint. Uh, it's just the book. Okay. And for this one, it's a little guy too. So, um, oh, these guys stuck together. Look. Oh, look, they could be a stand up too. Look, they want to be a stand up too. Everybody wants to be standing up today. That is actually really. All right, you're not supposed to stand up though. Come apart. All right, so I'm going to just cut it. Damn, that wax is sticky. It wants to hold on. All right, here we go. All right, your part now. Okay, so here's my little book part, right? So I could paint it standing up, I could paint it flat. And I think I really want the like, just the wax, I'm just gonna just do a nice, 
I'd go for my star to curve it, right? So here I'm really just focusing on like sort of the direction of the wax, right? And I'm following the lead of my flowers. I could do also like dabbing to kind of get the petal feel, right? And kind of just do, I could do like circles because I feel like the hockey brush, it just makes like a perfect flower petal. If you just kind of like turn it on its side and pull it out, it's like a flower, you know? So the, br the paint brushes, I, I always say, I always think like the paint brushes make the most beautiful flowers. All right, I'm gonna switch brushes to, I'm gonna add a contrast and texture. So after I've done a lot of that kind of like sweepy hockey brush, I switch to the bristle brush and I'm gonna kind of like fill it in with this, with the texture, right? All right, here we go. Texture, 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 texture. And I know if I don't like the texture too much, you know, tomorrow, whenever, when it cools down, I can scrape it back. All right. And going around, around those flowers with the texture off the top, in from the outside edge, right? I like my outside edges thick. I like my outside edges thick, so I'm going in. In. All right, good. And then I'm just going to go ahead and fold it so that I don't crack it tomorrow, right? I'm just going to fold it, right? So it kind of, kind of blends, and then I can just smooth it out. So you want to keep folding it. Okay. Okay. So here too is like, I can, it's so beautiful. And I still, I think it's just really neat how this is like sharp and smooth, right? So texture speaks to uh, focus, right? So it's interesting. Um, and I get real creative with the wax with these floral pieces because I feel like those brushes are so floral, but I love how this is sharp and this is sharp and then this is blurry and this is sharp, just right off the, off the bat. Okay. So, oh shoot, I have to do something about this bottom edge. Hang on one second. So I'm just gonna go ahead, I won't do it now, but I'm just gonna take this, this has to get trimmed off right here, but I'll just do that. I'll just do that on my own. All right. I'm just gonna lay it down and trim it with a razor blade. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about encaustics and encaustic colors. Um, I'm just gonna put, uh, let me see if I can just pin my. Okay, so I, I'm going to say that my general rule of thumb with encaustic painting, um, when I start adding the wax colors is going, is starting light. Um, and I'm going to try to really emphasize the idea of weaving. And I think like this, this last body, I would say the last two bodies of work that I successfully showed in the galleries were my most successful, um, encaustic paintings. And they kind of, um, again, it's like, it's like I'm progressing all the time too. So one of the things I was able to achieve that I really wanted to achieve was that sort of, um, la layering effect where it felt like something was coming out and something was going back. Right. So I think it's very hard to use encaustic painting and get that effect because in painting, we would just stick to lights and darks in terms of creating forwards and backwards, right? That's what we do in photography is that if it has light on it, it you know, it's coming forward. And if it's dark, it's going back. So in wax, because it's the same weight, even if you have a light color and a dark color, but they're the same weight, they kind of compete against each other. They don't as easily shift forwards and backwards. So then you have to navigate some other techniques. Um, and also you're dealing with this kind of, the photo is coming from the back. So you kind of need to figure out how and those lines come through. So think about um, what helps me is thinking about in real life, um, like what am I trying to create? Or what would this really look like if I was physically seeing it? And some of the images I think about are like being in a garden. And when you're in a garden, you know, 
and the lights coming like three quarter from the side or from above, it's like the flowers that are in front of you and closest to you are sharp and in focus. And then you can see through windows of positive and negative space. And then those areas get like blurry and softer, right? So you have to kind of construct and make these decisions as to where the foreground exists, how you're going to treat that and where the back and how you're going to treat the background. So I would say sharper and brighter for the foreground and darker and blurrier for the background. Um, so that's easy, easy to say, but then to actually do that with the encaustic paint is very challenging. So it, it, in a way you're painting from the back forward, right? But then sometimes if it gets like too blurry, then you try to like go back in and, and dig out. So you just have to kind of make these lines and separations um, make sense and work together, which is, which is really hard, which is really hard. So I'm just going to show you this painting. And this is actually a reproduction of this painting. But I would say this was sort of the beginning of my really being under able to sort of create like foreground and background. So and I, I cut her out. And I put her on another background. And then I was able to use color I feel like to make her figure seem like it was actually jumping out or coming off of the background, right? This is a little flatter than the original because it's a reprint. But the other thing I think was very helpful for me in this painting was I was, I sort of began this idea of quiet space versus busy, right? And so it's like, she is the subject and then every, like everything else is sort of falling off of her in a nice, like narrative way that works together. So I can try it. There's a lot of texture in this painting. And then some of it's been like subdued and some of it's been like popped out. So we can try to kind of talk about that. Um, and it also has that same, this piece has that same theme that I was talking about earlier where I feel like I have like half of it dark and half of it light. Right, so if we think back, right, so even if it's like, I mean, no matter how you do it, right, it has some type of split in it where, um, and that's, I think, just like a theme in, in my work that I like. I also like to think of um, a strong light source either coming, you know, coming into, like as if I was in a studio, like lighting it, that there's a strong light source in one direction, lighting whatever's in the picture. Okay, so as far as colors go, I don't usually ever start with like a dark color and I usually mix all my colors. So, um, and I've been, you know, consistently going like sort of um, purpley greens, but I also feel like my wax color is not my end all color. Um, and I think that the flowers need what's like a background color or a dark color for the background. So it could be blue, brown, gray, purple. You definitely, I think, can always use green in these paintings, um, even if it's just a little bit of green, because it, I think it just helps with the realism and it's natural. So, um, I, and then I think you need, you definitely need a light color. Like, um, and your light color does not have to be bright white, but it could be like a light pink, um, a pale nude can be really nice. Like these are sort of like peachy pale nudes. Um, this is an opalescent white, right? So I could even say that these four colors, I'm gonna mix together on my palette and use as my light color. Um, you know, I could pick a couple greens too. The other thing is, is like, because I'm such like a mixer painter, like I could use, like, these are like, these are just beautiful together, like the pink and green. Right. And I mean, I could do the, all of my encaustic work with these, these paints or even like three of these paints, like one, one light, one dark. Right. 
because I know that I can use pigment sticks, tar, pan pastels, right? If I want to make them the, the sort of shadow happen, right? And the tones happen in the thing. So I don't need to use like six greens. I could simply use this green and lighten it a little bit with this pink. And then maybe I have an accent color. So my accent color could be, I mean, the yellow is always good, right? Notice I haven't picked any blues. <laughs> I mean, blue to me is is a very dominant. It's just like a, it's like a box. It's I mean, if I use blue, it's at the it's at the end like a touch, <laughs> uh, and it might even be like I do like that extra pale cerulean, but it might be like this like the king like the king's blue. Uh, yeah. right? So here are some good colors to start out with. And then the other thing that I like about like these light colors too um, is that the, if if I start painting lighter, I can always make it darker, right? If I use a dark and caustic, it's like very hard to make it lighter. Um, there's a couple techniques I can show you guys tomorrow where you do very contrasty layers, and that's like something I've tried to teach on Zoom before, where you use like literally black and put white on top of it. And I can kind of demo that. And then you put like a clear over it and you scrape the two, merge the two back. Um, it's almost like algebra. You know, it's like you have two minus X times three C, you know, times negative two. I mean, really that's a pretty normal and caustic equation, right? Because as you're adding, you're also using heat to merge those layers and then you're also subtracting. So in a way it's like, I don't know what's gonna happen. So we'll work on that. Um, but all of these pieces are like prepped and ready to go with paint. And, um, you know, you don't wanna, because we're starting with such beautiful photos, you don't wanna feel too pressured to do too many crazy tricks with the, with the encaustic, right? You're just gonna try to sort of like add, you know, and subtract. We're gonna talk about, I mean, and, God, I love, like I, like look how pretty these colors are. These are actually my mud colors, right? So I save all of them, but like, look, you know, you have fun. I don't know how many paints you guys have, but like, shoot, if I just made a painting with these colors and then I had like, so pretty, right? Yeah, they're really nice. And like, you could just paint with the encaustic with all of these light colors. Like, just pick your favorite light colors. Like, look, like this little, like, look, right? And then seriously, if you want a shade, you can use tar or just a brown pigment stick to kind of like tone any of these bright colors down. And if they're semi-translucent, they're gonna be so soft and pale anyway, right? And if everybody, if I give everybody a, an assignment tonight, like um, look at flower, like look, look at all the range of colors and flowers, right? I mean, from pastel to like really opaque orange to like pure magenta, like, right? So um, there are a lot, a lot of colors of flowers. Right, so don't forget to do your research. I mean, I don't actually like to make my, try to make my flowers look like anything um, a specific out there in the world. Like that's, that's just not something I do, but I mean, that could be something you're interested in. Um, you know, don't forget about orange. Orange is definitely, definitely a flower color, right? Orange, so it's so pretty. And lots of greens, right? Like leaves and, and when light hits flowers, it changes them, right? So um, they get darker and lighter. So I'm gonna just pull out a couple more colors. Oh my God. And color is hard. I mean, color is beautiful, but it's also challenging and can be intimidating. Um, and we're not gonna put like a ton of layers on these tomorrow. When we paint, when I paint tomorrow with encaustic, we're gonna put like, just like we did with the other mediums, we're gonna put just a little bit and blend it in and let, you know, med like blend it in. And then at the end, we're gonna, we're gonna, you know, it, put the punctuation in. I just had kind of a neat picture too. Like, has anybody ever done any like free writing? 
like stream of consciousness writing yeah. yes okay so when you're doing stream of consciousness writing you're not thinking about subject matter you're not thinking about punctuation you're not thinking about sentence structure right right so let's just say that in painting with like encaustic paint is a little bit like free writing and then at some point you have to just stop free writing and you have to get organized, right? And then if you need to free write again, you start free writing again, and then you need to get organized, right? So, and then hopefully like somewhere in between those like starting and stopping and resetting that you're getting, you're getting that um, relationship between your photo and your painting or something magical is happening. And it looks great, you know? Okay, let's start, do some questions. Um, I don't want to start painting yet in those like 12 minutes. Um, <laughs> you guys can get organized with your palette. Oh, if you're not painting, you're just going to watch me. Don't worry about it. But um, if you are going to paint, you know, pick or just or to play with some colors, you know, think about some colors. I don't even know really what you all are going to be working on or are working on. So maybe you want to, do we want to share some stuff like that in the morning? Does anybody have any floral work they're currently working on that they'd like feedback on or? Um... I do, but it's all black and white. Okay. It's been really helpful for me today to just take out the pictures that I have. Uh huh. And as you are talking, looking at the pictures and seeing where that may or may not apply. Uh -huh. So it's been really helpful today. It's very cool. Oh, awesome. Yeah, I mean, go ahead. I've been shooting flowers since October, but I don't have anything mounted right now. So maybe tonight. Okay. Um, does anybody else have anything that they're currently working on? Floral, or is this like, are you guys like really using this material to like, help you get started, help you get started? I have think, I have work in progress, but it's all over the place. Some of, some of us from the previous one where I started and never finished. Right. <laughs> and I'm like stuck okay. uh, still. Um, well, well that's, I have, a really, that's a really good, I think that was a theme and you, you, I think that was a theme in everybody's thing, like feeling stuck. Yeah, I'm like, I just don't know. I don't know where to, to take. So now I have, I have ones that I started out with a person in it and now they're just all floral. And I'm like, I'm not sure, like, do I put another clear coat on it? Do I, right. I, I just don't know what to do with it. Is, is, so I, 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 have, I have a couple of different things. And like I said, I'm stuck with all of them. I just, I'm in a quandary. Right. So, so we can talk, if everybody, you know, if you guys want feedback on where you're stuck, we can talk about that. So why don't, if you guys have an image that fits, how about this? If you guys have an image of a piece that you feel stuck on, let's look at it. Um, and I think what I'll do, I think what I'll do is I'll pick, I might not do all the pieces tomorrow, but I think I'll pick like one wood, one paper, definitely the little booky thing. And I'll finish them in the morning, which means I'll add the encaustic paint on them. And then I'll add the pigment sticks and we'll finish them together. And then we'll go back to you guys, right? So in a way, I, I, I can't help but compare encaustic painting to mathematical equation um, because it is really, um, there's infinite ways and factors that can go into each person's work and um, the results can be, uh, uh, can be all over the place, right? There's no right or wrong answer, right? These are your equations about what you're putting into them and how you're working on them, how you're reacting to them, your choices that you're making, what materials you're using, your preferences. But if I could try to help you guys make good decisions based on decisions that work for me, that I think can be a very helpful tool for you guys to apply to your studio practices, right? Even if it's just following like this A to B to C to D. So today we did A, right? We did B 
and we did C. Tomorrow we're gonna do D and E, which is gonna be encaustic painting and pigment sticks, right? And there's gonna be some like variations within each of those letters, right? Okay, so A had, you know, we were picking the picture, we were picking the tone, whatever, whatever, right? B, we were mounting it on different things, doing different edge things, right? So each of these sort of steps has some options with decisions within them, right? Okay, so <laughs> I can give you advice and I can give you sort of the structure to make the work. And then you really need to go, you know, with your own decision-making and learn how to, and how to answer your own questions. All right, so that's that's something we can do tomorrow. If everybody wants to email me a, what they're calling a stuck image, right? Something they're stuck on. And you could be stuck on getting started. You could be stuck on editing what, you know, do I paint this picture or this picture, right? You could be stuck further down the line, meaning that you painted three or four layers of wax on it and you don't know what to do with it. That's kind of where I am right now, yeah. Right, and most of the time when that happens, for me, what my takeaway is, is that my, my ground, my, I, it was a bad, it was bad to begin with. I mean, I hate to say it, but when I just can't figure it out, it was just not there for me to figure. It was just was not there. It was not working from the very beginning. It was not a good photo. I wasn't, I wasn't able to tell a story with it. I couldn't. So that is just probability. It's just a fact of art that not every photo is going to make a great encaustic painting. And that's what I was saying earlier is that we sort of just need to accept that rate of failure as part of our process, right? Which also elevates our successes to being like, like elevating our successes, right? So if this was like successful, this was a very successful piece for me. I mean, it sold two weeks before the show even went up. It was like super successful for me mentally because I wanted to solve some problems within Caustic that I was able to solve in this piece. One was really creating foreground and background, right? So, so these successes are not taken lightly. It was hours and hours of work, multiple failure pieces before that one. Lots of mediocre stuff, right? But all important to be able to get to that, right? Okay, yes. so stuck is um, part of the process for sure. And nothing lasts forever. Everything is temporary. And these are, you know, practice, 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 right? Even in drawing the flowers, like going over those outside lines and spending time cutting them and putting them together, you know, organically before you actually glue them and making stuff and photographing and looking at it. It's this sort of like, it, you know, it's, it's, um, it's like a yoga flow, right? You learn, you learn the names of the poses, you do them wrong 50 million times, then you figure out how to do them right, then you can do them, you know, without even thinking about them, right? It's a flow. Um, so, so I think I'm going to end with that. Does anybody have any questions? I have a quick question. Yes, um, please. So on some of the base coats you did um, yeah. with the wax, you did them like separate sections. Yeah. Um, would you please explain why you don't need to fuse those? Yes. So right now we're talking about fo photo to wax medium. Mm -hmm. So you only have to fuse wax to wax. Okay. That's where the fusing actually is fusing. Right now, I wouldn't really, I would just be dissolving or liquefying wax okay. on paper. There's nothing on the paper to fuse to. So really you have to be, have a layer of wax plus a layer of wax to be able to fuse. Okay. So you're, you're trying to bond those two layers of wax. And it gets very confusing. People are like, but you, and fusing, so fusing has two definitions. One is bonding the two layers of wax. And one is, is a melting technique, a removal. So if I had um, wax that I didn't want on that panel anymore, I could use the heat to melt the wax to remove it. That's what I would be doing. I wouldn't technically be fusing. I would just be like heating it up to get rid of it. Okay, thank you. Right. So when tomorrow, when I have a layer of wax and I have another layer of wax on it 
and I heat them up at their, you're just heating them up so that they're bonding to each other. And then we can talk about, are you doing it to remove it? Are you doing it to pull it? Or are you doing it just to connect? Great question, really good question. And I hope that was a good, solid uh, explanation. That was excellent. Yeah, and, and I, don't, I don't think that like encaustic art, like photo encaustic people, this, this brings up another great question. Like, could those pieces be done? Technically. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Like there is no, 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 nobody that would say that you have to do anything else to them. So literally like <clears throat> Elizabeth Messina, very famous photographer from LA, she would not, she would not, this would be, she would be like, why would you add anything? <laughs> she, she'd be like, that is, better. She, that is freaking beautiful. And honestly, if you guys tonight, when you leave me, if you go and you look up like Edward Steichen and the pictorialist photographers, this is exactly what their work looked like. Yeah. Right. And they used wax over their prints to preserve them right at that time. Mm -hmm. So they literally were using all kinds of chemicals to ignite the photos on paper. So then when they were fully developed, they would take wax and coat them as a preservative. I mean, there is something so freaking beautiful about this look. It's soft, it's photographic, it's historical, it's dreamy, it's elegant, it's tasteful. Like it's, it could be totally done, right? So that was sort of what I, where, like right back to where I started sort of this morning is like part of like COVID is like, why, why always add so much? Like why so much chaos? Why throwing so many rocks in the water? Like technically, if you're taking a beautiful photograph, you know, mounting it to a wood panel or putting wax on the paper and you're happy with it, by all means, you're done. I mean, technically you're done. One, two, three, you're done. You've, you're, you're, it's a, it's a, a, you know, an encaustic photo. Now, if you're not using this type of paint, right, technically it's not an encaustic. It's just like a waxed paint. Okay. I mean, if you want to be like nitty, so then, okay. So you melt a little bit of this and add like a little, then it's like, right. But, the, but encaustic means to burn in. So, so the thing, you know, to, to burn in and it, it's a weird word, like, because technically the medium itself is beeswax, resin and pigments. But what happens is when you layer them with beeswax, resin, they need to be heated up and able to correctly, correctly bond. It's kind of like ceramics. Like you could go to the ceramic studio and you could glaze something, but if you don't fire it, it looks like shit, right? The magic happens in the heat element. Okay, when that all those things explode, the same with photography, like you could go in the dark room and print on a picture. If you didn't develop it, it's nothing. It ain't nothing. It's nothing. So it's those chemicals that combust and react that explode the molecules and make the picture happen. Right. So mm -hmm. similar and encaustic, like you can just wax coat, you can wax paint photos all day long. Like I've done a million wax infused or wax painted. You know, Jerry Eisenberg does technically wax infused art where she's just literally. She doesn't sit over there. I've got to, she's not, you know. Um... What? <laughs> oh. I, I, so Jerry Eisenberg literally takes those strips of, you can look her up. She just runs them across the palette with beeswax and hangs them up and they're, you know, lickety split, too beautiful. They're waxy, you know. She didn't labor over them and scrape and burn and brush and mix paint and, you know, but they're beautiful, right? So I, it's very important to me as an artist and to, for me with my students to teach this, nothing, nothing is less about simplicity, right? There's nothing less about doing less. Beauty is beauty. End of story, period, exclamation point, right? And when you think it's beautiful, it's done, you know? And your expression of beauty is yours, you own it. I'm just teaching you technical stuff. Like I'm just sharing ideas, you know? I'm just dancing the dance, but you're, you're the artist, 
right? And a lot of times I go too far, face it, you know? So, and that's part of my process. You know, I say too much, I do too much. I'm too active. I waste a lot of energy. Like, yeah. So hopefully I'm gonna change that, but, but it's okay. Well, you made me feel a whole lot better. Cause I was thinking like I was, a, I shouldn't say a miserable failure cause that's not quite right. But just, just putting the, the act of putting the encaustic uh, wax on a photograph and just saying, okay, that's done is acceptable. And I just need to overcome the fact that, you know, maybe that's, that's okay. That I'm not like doing all these crazy things. And I think what happens is you're right. I did all these things and now I'm like, well, where the heck's my focal point? Cause I've totally lost it now because it's covered in all this other stuff and everything's too busy. Don't dance more than you need to, you know, yeah. don't, don't say less is more. Don't say more than you need to say. And until you're kind of like really ready to say more, say less, That's you, could, you know, build, build up to it. Mm -hmm. You don't have to come out of the gate doing 50 layers of paint. Like, no. <laughs> and honestly, like, I'm going to, I'll do some really pretty, very simple stuff for you guys tomorrow that you'll just love. I mean, basically everything I did today is just beautiful. It's just so soft and elegant and organic. Elizabeth would be proud of me. I mean, she's a minimalist, you know? And like, I used to look down on, like, even when I was in college, I was like, those minimal artists, they're just lazy. <laughs> they're just freaking lazy and they they're not working as hard as I am and I'm working so much harder and why aren't they working as hard as me and as I got older like I was like wow they're practicing restraint they have theories they're thinking a lot they're like holding back they're like cons you know conserving conserving their energy they're saying so much but they're not working as hard like so it's just like, it's like a counterbalance, you know, that's mm -hmm. why, you know, it's like a yin and yang thing, you know? Yeah. So beauty is beauty, end of story, period. And when you see something that's beautiful, you know it, right? When you make something that's like, you know, it has a purpose, like, cause you're practicing or something, that's different. You're practicing, you're learning something, you know? But then if you want to make something beautiful, you know, don't belittle it if it just doesn't, if it's not hard for you, you know, like just because it's hard, it's not beautiful. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, or challenging. So let's, well, let's talk about real simple beauty. Um, especially because we're dealing with like, that's why I'm like really happy at this point in my life. Like we're, I'm dealing with, um, you know, flowers, for example, because like, you know, with the figures, I was trying to embellish like so much content and narrative content and emotional content that I felt that like I put a really heavy burden on the wax and the materials and all of this texture. But if you're working with something simple, you know, like flowers or a little collage grid, you know, or some of these other genres of art making, like less is more. Mm -hmm. They're already, you know, they're already beautiful. You took a good picture of them. Like, you don't need to say that much. You know, just support them with the wax and make your wax pretty. Mm -hmm. right? Soft colors, light, translucent, you know, a little bit of texture, you know, a little bit of push and pull, play around with it, make it original, make it original, but keep it soft. Mm -hmm. All right. So on that note, beauty is beautiful. <laughs> All right. No, I'm just kidding. So, um, uh, sorry for, you know, always a little technical challenge here in Zoom world. I wish you guys were here in the studio with me, but um, I'll see you tomorrow at 11.45. And I'll hopefully, why don't you fuse? Oh, is that was that was you, Marsha? Why don't you have to fuse the base coat? Yeah, because you're not fusing it to anything. Fusing is optional at that point. I saw a couple of videos where people still fused it and that's why it makes more sense what you're saying. So thank you. Yeah, I mean, you can if you feel nervous about no, it. because when I've tried it, it, like you said, it clears the wax, but so. It melts it and, and melts it. So, and then there's, there's over fusing. So learning how to fuse correctly is also a challenge and we can kind of talk about that tomorrow. So it's like distance to it. And you can fuse, you know, on the, on the slide where you're just like fusing so quick because you don't want to get rid of some texture. So we can talk about that too. It's really easy for people in the beginning just to be like, 
you know, like really, like really fuse it, like, and then you're like, oh no, it's everything's gone, right? So it's definitely like, and you know, it's just it's just practice. Great question. So, okay. Um, yeah, I'll see you guys tomorrow. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye, everybody. Good night. Have a great dinner. Get some sleep. <laughs>